And welcome back. Well, do you ever dream about traveling to a place that you've only read about or seen in a movie or on TV? Do you wonder what in real life, if, if it would live up to that dream? Well, that idea is what sparked this novel titled Paris by the Book. It explores the power of family and the magic that hides within the pages of a book. And we are here now with the author, Liam Callanan, who lives in Wisconsin with his wife and his three daughters, which is great. Great to meet yeah. you. Oh, to be great here. to be on. Thank what you. What a cool book. And uh, to explain the concept, um, one of the things that you, you weave in into the book are these these paths that you take and in and sort of include and intertwine children's books exactly right? that's that was that was the seed of the book for me that my kids were so into children's books about Paris that we actually went to Paris and we let them guide us around Paris using these books so they took the red balloon which is also a film a favorite of ours and then Madeline books and it was great at one point my girl uh, she's now 10 but she was uh, five or six at the time put her hands on her hips and she said I think we've been here before <laughs> And so, With uh, Miss Clavel? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> My girls are not in two straight lines, so they're a little, oh, okay. bit, they're a little wilder than that. Cute. So what would happen when you're on these trips? Because you know that you had a, a, an interesting proposition when you were there one time with your family. We did, we did. My girls love books, so they're huge readers. And we found ourselves going into a bookstore. It was the last day, and this bookstore was a mess. There were books piled everywhere, and there were boxes everywhere. And it turned out it was going out of business. And the owner looked at us and she said, your girls really like books. It was an English language bookstore. She said, would you like to buy the store? <laughs> and was a, my wife and I, we're both oldest children, so we're very responsible. But we, we walked back to the metro and we thought we could do every, we could change everything. We could leave yeah. our little east side home and we could go live here in Paris or we couldn't. And we decided that we couldn't, but then I decided in the novel we could. So mm -hmm. a fiction was a way to get there. Cute, that's really cool. Um, the book was, um, we mentioned, inspired by some classics mm -hmm. like The Red Balloon and Madeline. Um, what happens in the book that, that you have to use these books to kind of, is it about finding clues? It is, it's about finding clues. The book's a little bit of a mystery. Uh, the narrator of the book, Leah, loses her husband and the police are sure that he's drowned in Lake Michigan. In fact, everyone is sure and she secretly is too, but she doesn't want to believe that something, when something like that so terrible happens to you, you just put it away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so she thinks, well maybe because he was obsessed with these books when he was a kid, Maybe he went to Paris. She just has a wild hair. Maybe this is what we're going to do. And she kind of finds some clues that lead her there. And so that's what they do. She goes and chases him down in Paris. And once she gets there, she discovers a Paris and a resolution of that mystery that she could never have anticipated. But it was a surprise along the way, which is very, I have to say, accurate to Paris. There's something different around every corner. You never yeah. know what you're going to anticipate. It's mm -hmm. very true. So while she's there, she, she learns a little of these clues, as you mentioned. She gets propositioned as well to buy mm -hmm. this bookstore. And she then transform, uh, transports her and her family there. Exactly. So they all find themselves living in Paris and a little bit un uneasily in Paris uh, because they don't all speak French. Her kids speak French much better than she does, which I have to say is somewhat true to life for me as well. I'm a yeah. longtime student at the Alliance Francaise here in Milwaukee. They're trying their best with me, but still my girls speak French better than I do. So when we're <laughs> in Paris, they're great. They actually know how to order milk in French much better than I do. Although the French like to serve it hot. Yes, they do. Yeah. So for Wisconsin girls, they're like, oh, Monsieur, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you're an associate professor, right, at UWM? Yes, I'm in the English department there. Okay, so um, I always wonder with um, professors who are also authors, did you share your, your book with your students? Is it required reading? Oh, <laughs> no. That's a great idea. That's a horrible right. idea. They all have to go buy your book. Yeah. Right, exactly. Exactly. Semester. Exactly. Well, please come April 3rd, students, too. Yeah. I, but I can't give them extra credit. No, it is interesting. I try to make sure that I'm a participant in the classroom, but I also don't want to be, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in the classroom. And yeah. so I like to let them lead the conversation. The, when I'm in class, it's all about the students and their work, which is amazing. We're really, really lucky at UWM. We have some amazing students, especially in creative writing. Yeah. Would you like to go to full time writing? Do you see yourself leaving teaching, or does one sort of help you balance they the do. other? They do. You know, I think, uh, I remember talking with another writer and I said, so why do you teach? Because she was very successful. And she said, students, they bring us the news. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, they do. I mean, Morning mm -hmm. Blend brings us the news, too. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Right. But, yes. Uh, but no, students, they really inform my creative life. They kind of give me like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that's how we do it. Like, this, they bring a lot of energy to it. That's so, neat. Yeah. yeah. So I really enjoy it. Who, who do you suggest to read your book? I mean, do you have to have this love or this desire to know more about Paris? Or is it really about this, almost like this 
mystery, a little bit of a love story. You just have to have your wallet and purse ready. I think. <laughs> <laughs> just buy it. <laughs> I think it's for people who have always dreamed about visiting Paris yeah. and maybe want to just go there in the pages of a book. It's for people who have family, uh, who have daughters like me, uh, who are interested in kind of seeing what the difference between what happens when you come up against a myth that you thought was real but maybe isn't after all. Anyone who and anyone who likes a good mystery, because like when I was writing it, I didn't know how the book was going to end. So I was kind of it was almost like writing it Ouija board style to see how I got to the last. That's page. interesting. Cool. Yeah. So when you started, you weren't like, "This is it." How many times did you change the ending? It was funny, actually. I, I, the ending was always what it was once I got there, but I changed the beginning about 17 times because really? it was only after where I knew where I was going. I said, "Oh, wait!" So the book starts this way. And I'm like, "No, it starts this way." So the ending actually. I didn't know it until I got there, but once I was there, oh, this is it. I'm not gonna spoil it. Huh. We, we ran out of time, but just really quick, do you believe in writer's block? Oh no, you just lower your standards. <laughs> <laughs> That's fast. Get it done. Answer I've heard yet for that question. That's fantastic. You've got a couple of book signings where people can meet you and get their hands on a copy of your book. Because it's not out until next week. Paris by the book, out next week. Out next week, April okay. 3rd. Awesome. April 3rd is when it's out. And that night, you have a book signing at Boswell Book Company right here on Downer. That's Tuesday, April 3rd at 7 p.m. Then Wednesday, the next night at 7 p.m., uh, April 4th, you're at Mystery to Me in Madison. People can find out more about the book and about you if they visit your web, uh, website. It's LiamCallanan.com. Great to meet Thanks you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Merci. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bonjour. Um, I don't know how to That's say only. Livre. 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 Un livre. Oui, c'est bon. Oh. Merci. <laughs> for you, madame. Thank you so much. It's about Thank all I got, right there. <laughs> <laughs> We're tapped. Yep. All right.